famous villains in show business. <laughs> you see, if only he'd used an inhaler, he would have been fine. <laughs> That's him breathing, but this is what he looks like in the flesh. The torpedo is dead, dude. No. You understand, Commander? That torpedo did not self-destruct. You heard it hit the hull, and I was never here. He starred alongside Sean Connery, Peter Sellers, Kevin Costner, and Burt Lancaster. Now he's performing on the West End stage. James Earl Jones discusses a lifetime in movies. Please welcome James Earl Jones. James, we are so used to seeing you on the screen and, more importantly, hearing you on the screen. It's great to have you on the West End stage. Are you enjoying yourself? Were they the, were they Adrian Lesser there? Yes. Yeah, Thank I'll you. be yes. watching him. I watched him last night in Hustle. Great actor. <laughs> yeah. Great fun. Yeah. So it's the the thing about this is is it the first time it's been an all black cast in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof? You brought it from Broadway to the West End. It's Probably not. You know, there there've been university experiments with all these plays, the great mm -hmm. plays. For, for a long time. Uh, this is the first time it's been tried in the commercial theatre, yeah, and on Broadway and in, in London. It's clearly a play you're fond of then, having done it on Broadway and agreed to bring it over here. What's special about it for you? Oh, the South. Uh, but also, I, I saw this play with Burl Ives. Good Lord, I back, remember him. Way back in the 50s, yeah, when uh, Barbara Bel Getty was playing Maggie and. Uh, uh, Miss Ellie. Uh huh. Miss Ellie from Dallas was Barbara Bell Gates, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a it's an old stalwart. I mean, Tennessee Williams went out of fashion for a good deal of time, and then he seems to have come back in with this. You're getting good reactions from audiences. Yeah. yeah. The the audiences find uh, a lot of humor, and it's not just because it's funny, but because things are ironic. Tennessee had an ironic sense of humor. But he often laughed at his own lines. He loved he loved the secret humor in in, <laughs> in his plays, and um, uh, the audiences here find that too. Well, also I guess they might be quite surprised to find you being humorous, because in a way they've got so used to being a bit scared of those enormous James Earl Jones tones. Well, I I, I tend to take dignified roles in you know and so on, but uh, I do I do a lot of nasty words in this play. Ooh. Things that I would get arrested for if I did it on the street. Yes. You know? Or here, even. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the thing that astounded me when I started to learn more about you was that, that you have a stutter. You have a stutter. I, I am a stutterer, mm. yeah. I, I don't want to be the spokesperson for <laughs> us, but, but I, I stuttered since I was uh, four years old. And, and I gather for many years when you were a child, you didn't speak at all. Well, from four to 14. Ten years. It was so painful and so embarrassing that I gave up. I just went zip. And, and yet you're the man whose voice we know almost more than any other American. What was the catalyst? Well, when you stop talking, you, bec you become a better listener. And I began to appreciate people who could speak. And I began to read more. And I, I said, these are great words. And I finally found a teacher in high school who said, if you like these words, you've got to be able to say them out loud. And that, that's what started it back again. Were you surprised then at what you sounded like when you did start? No, it was just, just that I could talk. Uh, uh, the teacher also said, don't ever listen to yourself, because if you do, no one else will. It was good advice. Very good advice. Uh, but now, everybody listens to you, I and mean, you do have this imposing way of talking. Tell me about Darth Vader, about getting that, because it's the part, I'm afraid, whether you like it or not, you will forever be associated with. Do you bear it with good grace? Well, David Prowse and I will share Darth Vader. David and, was the body. Yes. And you, you uh, but I, I, th I think uh, George Lucas realized that he had the great character, but he wanted a darker, pardon the expression, darker voice. Yeah. So he picks a black guy, born in Mississippi, raised in Michigan, who stuttered, and that, that was his Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think Darth Vader is a stutterer from Mississippi. You take great pleasure, clearly, in words. That, that so much of that comes over. Therefore, it's something to, of a surprise to discover that you are also a man who raises goats. <laughs> <laughs> goats a don't man of, talk. Don't know exactly. But they try. <laughs> my dog tries. My goats try to talk. They want to 
because they have so much they could tell me if they had English, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about goats that appeal to you? Why did you end up keeping goats? They're, they're handy. <laughs> they, they, they cut the lawn, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And everything else. Goats yes. browse, they don't just graze. When I was a kid, uh, we had goats, and uh, speaking of kids, uh, yeah. the nanny had about six babies. I was the star of the, of the grade school when I could bring the whole class down to see our goats, and they were all over the place. They were jumping on top of buildings. They were just acrobats immediately. I saw that goats. And I was a hero of that. Goats. Day. Yeah, goats. Are <laughs> well, interesting that, that they would help you then bring you out of those those dark years as a younger child. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Long may you run in cat on a hot tin roof at the Novello Theatre. Thank great. you. It's fun. Pleasure to meet you, ladies and gentlemen. James Earl Jones. <laughs>